Next on Worcester News Tonight, the Save Notre Dame Alliance steps up their efforts to preserve the historic church's bell. Plus, area high schools are taking extra precautions as the threat for Tripoli virus is upgraded in area towns. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. The Save Notre Dame Alliance meeting tonight. They're looking to save a key piece of the former Worcester Church, even a year after the building was knocked to the ground. Our Cam Jandro is in Worcester tonight with those details. Cam. Anna, Notre Dame sat right here on the corner of Church and Franklin Streets for nearly 90 years. Now, the bell from the first Notre Dame church was actually donated by Hanover Insurance, who owned it, to the city of Worcester. Now the question is, what exactly are they going to do with that bell? Almost a year after Notre Dame to Canadiens was torn down in downtown Worcester, the Safe Notre Dame Alliance wants to make sure the former church's memory isn't lost. The walls are down. So now is a question of how do we preserve the heritage of the people who built that church and the city of Worcester in its immigrant, French, Canadian and immigrant history. The Alliance spent nearly two years fighting. Friday, they listened in on ideas for the historic bell, which came from the first Notre Dame. It belongs downtown near the three churches, the three Notre Dame churches that it passed through. They were all on Franklin Street. Proposed sites for the bell include on the common near the Turtle Boy statue, a vacant property on the corner of Franklin and Church Streets, and Franklin Street near the library. As a reminder of an important uh, piece of architecture and an important piece of history. Trying to preserve uh, some of the Worcester history that still exists. Artwork with the bell was displayed on the walls of pop-up Worcester. The Alliance is accepting ideas and artwork from the general public. What we do to memorialize Notre Dame needs to be worthy of what we've lost. Worcester's Liberty Bell. Now, if you weren't able to stop by the pop-up tonight, you can submit your artwork and your ideas on September 10th. I asked the Alliance if there was a set timeline to have this project finished, and right now there really isn't one. In Worcester tonight, I'm Cam Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. The Worcester City Council says they'll try to work with the developer of the former Our Lady of Mount Carmel property. Tonight, the preservation group who worked to try and save Mount Carmel is hoping they'll also be able to give some input. Member Mauro Di Pasquale says much of the land is still under restrictions held by the state. He says if there are going to be any concessions made to release the restrictions, there should be community input. They'd like to see the space set aside for an Italian heritage center where they can house memorabilia, historical artifacts and other items parishioners may have. Di Pasquale says the space would also allow for the social aspect of the neighborhood to be preserved. It's an Italian national church, an icon for the city of Worcester. So this is something that impacts all of the city and it's, it's part of our Worcester heritage. So it would make sense. And an Italian heritage center is the kind of place that would last for a long time. De Pasquale says in order to release the restrictions for the land, it takes legislative action. Area schools are taking extra precautions as several communities raise the Tripoli threat level to critical. Our Gretchen LaRosa spoke with one school system who says they aren't taking any chances. A new football season starts with a warning about the mosquito-carrying virus referred to as Tripoli. Schedules are usually done months in advance, so certainly uh, a development like this throws a little bit of a, a monkey wrench into the plan. Grafton High School Athletic Director Jim Scanlon says the threat of Triple E is changing the plan they had for the fall athletic season. And that means that we are uh, changing schedules around, altering schedules as we need to, um, providing insect repellent to our student athletes and staff to make sure that um, we provide the safest environment possible. All night games in Grafton are rescheduled for earlier times. There are seven confirmed human cases of Triple E this year, including one in the town. Dr. Michael Hirsch says the risk of the virus is a concern and awareness is important. We are very sympathetic to the idea that we want children to be active and we want the sports teams to have their, their games. But we also know that uh, 
unfortunately, uh, they're very much at risk when they're very sweaty and they're out there in the, in the dusk hours. That's, that's what the mosquitoes like. High school football kicks off a week from Friday. Scanlon says, as excited as they are, they are putting safety first. We are um, taking all steps necessary to ensure the safety of our student athletes, coaches, parents, officials, fans. Now, Dr. Hirsch says Triple E will remain a threat until the first frost of the season. Officials are encouraging people to cover up in long clothing and continue wearing bug repellent. In Worcester, Gretchen LaRosa, Worcester News Tonight. A once sports themed restaurant in the city turns into a craft cocktail bar. The former Railers Tavern is now still in stir. Niche Hospitality says the new cocktail bar will have a more intimate setting. Over the next few weeks, they're looking to the public for feedback. Our, uh, you know, fans to come in here and help us uh, through the process of research and development. So we'll be transitioning the space completely uh, to a completely different uh, venue cocktail bar. Uh, from Railers Tavern, so we're welcoming all their input and feedback throughout that process. Niche Hospitality expects to officially open Still and Stir sometime in early October. There's concern about the air quality in one of the city's elementary schools. Initial air quality tests at Columbus Park School came back negative for mold. The school committee is requesting the city and state conduct additional tests. Teachers Union President Roger Nugent says he's experienced burning eyes during his time in the school. He's concerned for the safety of staff and children. Columbus Park is one of the district's oldest schools and enrolls hundreds of children. Imagine renovating your home and discovering a centuries old artifact. It's what happened to a Lester family this week. Our Olivia Lemon spoke with them today and has more. May de Jesus carefully handles a more than 120 year old newspaper. Nature's love, a two headed spell. Her husband found a copy of the Worcester spy in a wall when repairing damage to their house. It's just awesome to see kind of the remedies and, and, the, and the articles and what they talk about and also the vernacular, how they speak is great as well. De Jesus says her house is the oldest in Leicester. It was built in 1720 and was the home of Colonel William Henshaw. Colonel William Henshaw cornered the phrase Minutemen. Um, this house originally had 1,200 acres. This, um, the town was incorporated in 1722. My family moved in here in 1910. I'm the fourth generation to live in this house. The Worcester Spy was one of the most popular newspapers in New England from 1781 to 1904. De Jesus says she has found other historical artifacts in her house before, and it's exciting to learn the history of her family and her home. My parents were very involved in Leicester politics. She says her hope is people won't be so quick to throw things away and find out more about their history. When your, elder, when your elders die, may it be parents, grandparents, just don't throw anything away. Go up in the attic and see because it's, it's your history. It's our history, and I think a lot of it gets lost to just be thrown away. De Jesus was dropping off the newspaper at the Worcester Historical Museum in hopes they would help her preserve it. In the studio, Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester couple is raising money to restore the Olympia Theater, but for the past few months, their funding has been stalled. The building is almost 130 years old. Patrick Flynn and Jennifer Wright are hoping to raise $250,000 to restore the building. In the meantime, they'll focus on opening a restaurant there as they work to raise the funds. This is the last weekend of the Brimfield Flea Market for the season. The three weeks in May, July and September draw up to 50,000 people. Our Chandler Walsh scoped out the vendor booths today and has more. Mary Golding carts her flea market finds down Route 20. Everyone can find me. I'm the girl with the orange chair. She's come to the Brimfield Flea Market to buy items for her friend's gift shop. We came down looking for little unique things that we can add to the shop and that will add a little personality. Golding is one of more than 20,000 shoppers here the flea markets last week in 2019. Visitors search for goods from chainsaw carved birdhouses to Old English stained glass pretty overwhelming at first. My first time here, there was a lot of walking and I think I was in sandals at the time. Always wear sneakers. Brimfield's police and fire departments staff the half mile stretch of vendor booths. All the officers understand that during the fair week, they're required to work. 
So they arrange their schedules and everybody, nobody takes vacation and that kind of thing. We currently have uh, the Department of Fire Services assisting us with drone service as well as uh, communications this year. Police Chief Charles Kuss says they experience more calls this week, so his officers are working long shifts with all hands on deck. And they bring their cars and their dogs and their wives and you know, all that stuff. And so we have all of the things that humans do and say and happen and multiply times eight or ten from what our normal town is. Chief Kuss says the department enjoys the flea market and the crowd it draws. People come far, like vendor Kathy Payne from North Carolina. Fifteen years ago we started doing it regularly. Or from close by, like Cindy Poirier from Sturbridge. Whatever you collect, whatever you love, you'll find it here. It's here. You know, it's yeah. here. The last Brimfield flea market of this year runs through Sunday. Antiquers and visitors can shop from 6 a.m. to dusk or 3 p.m. on a Sunday. In Brimfield, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight.